Navy as a uh, uh, cryptolinguist, a translator of uh, Russian, Spanish, and Persian. And um, that's how I kind of fell into this study. After I, was, after I uh, retired from the Navy, I spent uh, actually 25 years teaching um, those same languages. It was a, a holiday when uh, uh, we who taught at a military academy had to be at work. Uh, so we didn't get the day off, but my son did get his public school day off, so he, was, he came to work with me uh, that day. And we had a moment uh, right after school uh, that uh, where he, he had a project for school that he had to do. And it was, uh, he had to write a paper on the subject of his choice. And of course, he says, like all 12-year-old boys, right? He says he wanted to do it on Bigfoot, the UFO, or the Loch Ness Monster, right? And I said, well, I said, better make a choice. He said, okay, Bigfoot. So I just, we started Google and Bigfoot. This was two, uh, 2008. Um, so we, we're Google and Bigfoot, and he says, Dad, what do you think Bigfoot sounds like? And I, said, and I just remembered some B-grade movie from the 70s, and I just goes, oh, and he says, Dad, that's not what Bigfoot sounds like. And I said, well, let's Google it. Google was new to me at the time, so I said, why not? So we Googled it, and it immediately brought me up to a website that had Ron's Sierra sounds on it. And I played it, I, I, I clicked on it, and I, I immediately knew. I, I could hear it. I could hear it, and I was stunned. So I played it over again, and it was just a you know, three-second clip. I played it over again. And over, and my son said, Dad, what's, what are you doing? What's wrong with you? I said, son, this, there's a language here, and that is not a human being. He said, what? What are you talking about? It's got to be fake. I said, no, that's not fake. I can tell. I said, how do you know? I said, I said, we need to slow it down like Dad used to do in the Navy. And after quite a bit of detective work and with some help from... I got in touch with some other um, researchers that put me in touch with Ron. I knew about, about him. I, I think I even had seen Dad's, one of my dad's old Argosy magazine that had an article on or something like that, but I, you know, it was interesting, but I, I was not into it. I grew up in the Rocky Mountains next to the largest uh, Indian school in the nation, the, the uh, the Intermountain Indian School. So I had a lot of Indian friends. And they, uh, you know, so I grew up hearing stories. The Indians all had stories about this. But I just thought it was, you know, wives' tales and stuff like that. So I knew about the concept of it, but I, I didn't have any real interest in it. So I didn't believe it was real. Me and Ron have done since the beginning, have, we have solicited the input of any recordings to, to listen to. So I've received hundreds of little uh, audio clips. None of it, none of it meets the standards of the, the, the uh, Barry Moorhead tapes. Um, a couple of them, but they're so short. A couple little morpheme streams, you know, and they're gone, but nothing of the quality. There seems to be little, little bits from all kinds of languages. Uh, here's what has happened is of course one of the things I did is play the tapes for native speakers of uh, anyone that was willing to listen to them. And every single person I ever played it for, including myself, right, uh, could pick up little things that they thought was part of their na native language or maybe even a part of an ancient language. Like, for instance, one of the first guys I played it for was uh, my close friend Jerry Masuda. He's a native Japanese speaker. And, and the reason, he was the first guy to heard it. He heard it the same afternoon I heard it. I took it right up to him. 
because it was called on this website Samurai Chatter. So I said, hey, I'm gonna let my Japanese buddy hear this, right? He says, oh my God, Scott. That, he said, that sounds like an ancient form of Japanese, but I can't understand a single word. But it was the staccato, the, you know, uh, the diaphragmic staccato. If you remember the old samurai movies, you know, how the old samurais used to speak. Oh, yeah, blah, 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 blah. That's what it sounded like to him. The problem is, is that every single person I've ever played it for, Persians, Russians, uh, Spanish speakers, they all hear something that sounds like their own language, uh, Native American speakers. But the problem with that is, we get into the, you know, uh, periidolia, whatever, you know, this thing where humans have a natural need to make sense out of something that doesn't make sense. So if I was to play these for you, you probably would have, every English speaker I've ever played them for has said, oh my God, he's saying this, he's saying that. No, we can't, we don't know what they're saying, but it sounds like they're saying things. It would be impossible to fake something like this. Besides the fact that the, the tapes have been um, studied by scientists that, that have proved that they are, you know, that they weren't doctored up, they weren't faked. Uh, it wasn't a bunch of Marines up there on duty, you know, trying to scare some hunters, like what Al Berry had believed for a long time. It was, it's not anything like that. Uh, and by the way, the reason that I would know is because I was trained in the very best uh, techniques of deception, Communica communications deception. The Russians were the best in the world, better than us even. My point being that nobody could have, if the Russians couldn't do it, nobody could. I'm not a sound specialist, so all I can do uh, in that sense is tell you that they do speak with much uh, a higher frequency than a human is, a, is able, capable of, and much lower, way lower. Which leads me to believe that they, they might actually be, be able to communicate in frequencies that we don't hear. Because what we do hear is we hear the frequencies dropping off, and after that we don't hear it anymore. So we don't know where it ends, some of it. And the same in going, going into the higher frequencies. There are many, many reasons that we know it is a language. Uh, I can give you the linguistic reasons, okay? It, it's, um, it, it virtually has, the Barry Moorhead tapes virtually have uh, every element and characteristic of language in them. Conversational turns in which one Creature is speaking to a, to the other, and the other answers. Okay, um, morphemes, what we would call syllables or words, are uh, repeated in both the uh, the um, inquiry and the response. Okay, um, interrogative, query. Oh, it's inflection. It's all there. It's all human. It's all it's it's all is exactly like human inflection if they do it the same way we do, right? In other words, a question sounds like a question. Okay, the interrogative inflection of it, and then the response inflection from the other creature. Okay, so, and then we got, uh, uh, oh, imperative inflection, where the creature is, is commanding or making a demand. The imperative, we've got the declarative inflection, which is just a statement very clear statement, and you might make two or three of them in a row and then st almost stop, like you could almost see a period there, of course. But um, they wouldn't have a grammar like that. Uh, the expression of emotion, both, uh, and we have almost 90 minutes of this, right? So in that, there are almost every emotion expressed by these creatures. Uh, anger, certainly, anger, frustration, uh, humor, 
There's actually a place there that I believe the big one kind of tells a joke and then laughs at himself. So, um, and then uh, the articulation of it, the articulation of the, the phonemes are virtually the same as, as humans. They make the same sounds that we do at, with about six or seven extra ones that I've never heard a human make in any language. That's how I know it's a language. And, and any expert that's actually sat down with me and listened to it, including the top researchers who, who don't believe that they have language, they cannot dispute. They never, I've never had one person who's listened to it dispute that it has to be a language. You begin to hear it. You don't have to be a PhD linguistic specialist to hear the language in it. Once it gets slowed down and you get it po you know, pointed out to you, the more you listen to it, you, laymen hear it. Whenever I present it, the reason that I know they're, they're not human voices is because I've spent several thousand hours of listening to the human voice on tape. Okay? I don't know anyone that has done that more than I, other than the guy who trained me in the U.S. Navy. Right? And it's just a professional assessment I've had to make. But there are real, uh, real reasons. Uh, we know they're not human because they speak at such a higher frequency and such a lower frequency than we do, than, we are than humans are capable of. Yet they're making the same types of sounds, the same articulations, you know. Um, so certainly the frequency of the uh, articulations. Uh, then there's the resonance, the volume. It's so easy to tell. These, it, to my ear, they have massive lungs. It's easy to hear that. And again, laymen can hear that. You don't need me to tell you. These guys have massive lungs. I've never heard this before in all my years. You know? Um, but one of, you know, one of the things that, that I've been able to, to, I later on was able to, to hear on the second or third pass through the tapes was they are speaking they are, they are articulating on the pant. Okay, now the pant, that's, if you know, you know, a pant for human beings and apes and any, anything else is, a pant is an inhale. Okay, these creatures don't, it doesn't seem to bother them whether they're exhaling, which humans do, or whether they're inhaling. Okay, now humans are capable of doing it, it's just, extremely difficult. It's like, I can't talk like this if I want. All right, but humans don't do it, right? No. But these creatures do it with ease. So, yeah, it's, that's, that was the thing that, I mean, I, I knew th those three things immediately sitting there that afternoon with my son, is that this was a language, pure and simple. And I'd only heard a few words. I could tell. Second one's, uh, it was not a human being. And the third thing is that it was not fake and could not have been faked. So, I mean, I knew that right away. But then what, the second, third pass, when I heard the, you know, the, the, the articulation on the pant, I, I knew that's impossible for a human being to do with those articulations. Oh, something else, the prosody, or the rate of deliverance. The rate of deliverance of the utterance is uh, almost twice as fast as us, as human beings. Now, not all of them. Just like human beings, we can talk fast or we can talk slow. Maybe they were, at that moment, excited, right? But. Yeah, the rate of the prosody or the rate of deliverance is way beyond what we can do. Maybe auctioneers, you know. 
after all these years studying this with Ron and we've been up on that mountain so many times, uh, the conclusion that we have come to, the only thing that we really can conclude is, uh, and Ron is the one that first said this to me, and I said, you're so right, Ron. He says, there, he says, Scott, we were up on a mountain. He says, Scott, there is way more going on with these creatures than we can possibly imagine. And he's right. From my experience, he's right. 